We have seen already one application, which was the study of which content to choose to specialize in using congestion games. We should now study another application in social networks, which is recommendation graphs. We should use the theory of Markov chains for that. I will now be talking about how to use Markov chain in recommendation graphs in YouTube. So what is a recommendation graph? Each video has in YouTube a recommendation list, which is a set of recommended videos, which are in some way related to the video that is seen. The size of this list depends, of course, on the size of the screen. The larger the screen size, the more we can see recommendations. And therefore, it will turn out that the size of the screen of those who see our videos will determine the propagation properties of the videos. We now define a weighted recommendation graph. The nodes in this recommended graphs are the videos in YouTube. A weight of a node is some number. It can be, for example, the number of views, or it could be the age of the node, or the number of likes, or the number of dislikes. A direct link in this graph between A and B appears if B is in the recommendation list of the video A. We want to get statistics on how many views have videos that are on your list if you have a given number of views, say X. So we chose at random 1,000 videos in YouTube and checked this and drew a curve in which the number of views of a video is the x-axis and on the y-axis we have the, num the average number of views of the videos in the recommended list of the video on x. So we have 1000 points here. Let me present the motivation for what we are doing here. If the linear relation implies that y is greater than x, then this means that the number of views of the video that is watched at time t increases in time. And therefore, after some time, one will not return anymore to watch the video if it follows a random walk mobility over the recommendation graph. As a result, we'll get low page rank. It turns out that the linear fit is not a good one, but the intuitive argument that I just mentioned also holds with other functions that give better fit. Let's find such a function and let's be more precise about the argument that I just described. With the logarithmic function, it turns out that we do get a good linear fit. We write on the horizontal axis the function f of the number of views of a video, where f is log in our case, and on the vertical axis the average of the function f, the number of views of the video in its recommended list. And as you can see here, it indeed provides a much better linear fit between the averaged log and of the views of the videos in the recommendation list and the log of the number of views of the initial video. This implies that the drift is strictly positive, the average drift, where we define the average drift as the difference between the average of the log of y and the log of x. 
Now this drift turns out to be positive for the special case that n is smaller than 5. So for a small number of videos in the recommendation list, which is the case for tablets and for cellular phones. What we want to do next is to relate the size of the screen to the popularity of videos. What we do, we consider a random walk over the recommendation graph in the following way. At time n plus 1, we visit at random, choosing through uniform probability, one of the videos recommended at time n, and so on. So the state of the Markov chain xn is just the number of views of a video at step n. And we want to learn about the properties of xn. We shall assume that xn is a Markov chain. And what we want to do is to see whether we return frequently to xn. We want to analyze some stability properties of this Markov chain. It will turn out that if this Markov chain is not stable, then our video will not be so popular, will not be seen frequently, as we should now see. So in order to analyze this, we have to present a short reminder of Markov chains that will take four slides. So a discrete time Markov chain taking values in some state x is a stochastic process that satisfies the following property. The future and the past are independent if the present is known. So if t is the present, then, for example, the expectation of any function of the future, in particular of the next time step, equals to this conditional probability given xt and given also all the other previous values of the state. A Markov chain is defined through transition probabilities, therefore. So we define the transition probability to move a time s from state x to any state in a set A as the probability that this x, this state at time s plus 1 belongs to A given that at time s it was y. I will now mention some properties of these Markov chains. We first speak about communication of states. Two states of a Markov chain communicate. If we can go for any one of them to the other one with positive probability. Now a Markov chain is said to be communicating if any pair of states that we take communicate with each other. It is said to be homogeneous if the transition probabilities that we saw do not depend on time. So the probability to move from state X to a group of states A does not is the same for any time S. A Markov chain is said to be periodic if the set X of states can be written as a disjoint union of some states. subgroups of x, so x1, x2, and so on, such that there is a cycle of indexes, so that, and, and finally, a periodic Markov chain is simply a Markov chain which is not periodic. Next, we introduce concepts related to stability which are recurrence and transience of states of a Markov chain. So choose some 
state x. x is said to be recurrent if one visits x infinitely often with probability 1. Otherwise, it's said to be transient. But there are two types of recurrence. So it, the, the, the set is said to be positive recurrent if, in addition, the expected time between visits of the state x is finite. It is called null recurrent if the expectation is infinite. If the train communicates and some state x is positive recurrent, then it is easy to see that all states of the train are positive recurrent. And the same is true for null recurrent. And the same is true for transients. So if one state is transient, then all states are transient. We can therefore speak about properties of the whole Markov chain. So we conclude that if the Markov chain is communicating, and we are restricting here to Markov chains that are homogeneous, time homogeneous. So all the state of the Markov chains are either positive recurrent, or they're all null recurrent, or they're all transient. Then we say that a Markov chain is stable if it is positive recurrent. It is otherwise called unstable. I next introduced some tools <coughs> to check whether a Markov chain is stable or not. These tools are called Foster Criteria or Yapunov Criteria for Markov chains. So we start with a function that will be called Yapunov function f, which has to be st strictly bounded away from zero. So we define now the drift of f for a given state x. So imagine that we know that we are now in state x. The next value of the state is unknown. It is a random. But we can compute its expectation or the expectation of some function of this. So we define the drift as the difference between the, the expected value of the function f at the next step, time t plus 1, minus the f evaluated at the current value of x. This is, we, we now def define the criteria of stability using these drifts. A Markov chain is, say, is unstable if the drift is positive at infinitely many states. If the drift is everywhere positive, then the Markov chain is unstable. It is stable if there exists some positive a, such that for each x, the expected drift is smaller than, some, than minus a for all the x except for some finite set of x's. There is a huge amount of literature on criteria for stability of Markov chains. I have with the theoretical background that we now have on Markov chains, we are ready to study the recommendation graphs behavior. The function f that we use there for describing the number of views can serve as a Lyapunov function. Recall that for f of x equals log of x, we obtain a linear relation. Indeed, we saw that we had a linear relation between the log of the number of views of a video and the average log of the number of views over videos in its recommendation list. The parameters of this line that describes this relation, A and B, depend on the size of the recommendation list. And we saw that when it is smaller than 5, then a is, turns out to be greater than 1, and B turns out to be greater than 0. This implies that the drift is strictly positive for every x. And hence, using Foster's criteria with this Lyapunov function, log of x, 
shows that the Markov chain is unstable. We conclude that if we move at a random way between videos that are recommended on the recommendation lists, then the time to return to a given video has an infinite expectation if the screen is small. And small screen means bad page rank, and therefore the video has little chances to be visible on recommendation lists of other videos. In view of these conclusions, we can now propose ways to increase the visibility of videos. We would like to increase the page rank of a video. And to do so, we would like it to have URL links from other popular contents. That is, from contents that has higher page rank. To increase the popularity of a video, it is thus recommended to create video comments with the link to the video we wish to promote and to put them on other very popular videos. Of course, videos can block this possibility, but it turns out that most pop very popular videos do not block this possibility, so you can embed their video comments to any video you wish. By doing so, the page rank of the video increases so that it appears in recommendation lists more frequently and at a higher, more visible location. Mathematically, this will imply that the drift of the function f can be made to be negative. Other things to do are to embed the links to the video on groups and on pages of social networks, on pages of your friends, on your own page, on blogs, on discussions, and so on. What I just presented is based on my joint work with Jean-Tan Portilla, Alexandre Reifers, and Rachid El Azouzi on the stability of Markov chains describing the random walk in recommendation lists. We made the data of the videos which we used in that paper available on the web page of CONGAS, which is a European project on game theory applied to complex networks. Before ending this part on recommendation graphs, I would like to say a few words on another axis in this field on which we are working and will continue to work. The problem of the design of a recommendation list can be thought of as a matching problem. It matches videos to other videos. We have been working on direct recommendations of movies in social networks that specialize in cinema, based on the profiles of users that subscribe and that leave comments on films they see. The matching problem then consists of which movie to recommend to each person. But we may also wish to assign persons to view movies and videos and not just to assign videos to persons. The reason is that as we already saw in YouTube, a, a large part of videos are not seen by anybody. So it is important to assign persons to video to make sure that each video gets at least a little bit of views so that we can initiate the algorithms for recommending them for other people. How does one rec construct recommendation graphs that take into account both the interest of people to see movies and the interest we have for movies to be seen by people? Last year, Lloyd Shapley and Elvin Roth received the Nobel Prize in Economy for their contribution to matching game theory, which is what we are going to use. Most matching games are extensions of the stable marriage game, in which each of N women has to rank each of N men and vice versa. The solution concept is a stable matching and it means the following. Matching is said to be stable if for any pair of a woman and a man, W and M, M cannot find another woman, A, 
whom he prefers over W, such that that woman also prefers him over the match that she was proposed. And this goes, of course, in both di directions. There are extensions that allow non-symmetrical matching. So we have been working on that with Julien Gaillard, Marc Elbez, and Emmanuel Etis. And this work is part of the Agorantic Multidisciplinary Research Institute, which we have created with University of Avignon, INRIA, and the CNRS. I mentioned some extension of the matching game. So the first one is the classmate problem, which is to decide next to whom to sit, who you want your neighbor to be. And it is a non-symmetrical extension since one may have more than one neighbor, unlike the monogamy game matching. Another extension into the college admission problem. It is a matching game in which each college ranks students and each student ranks colleges. The advantage of using this matching game approach is that it, it gives rise to polynomial complexity. Unlike global optimality, which requires often non-polynomial complexity. And yet, the solution it gives, that of a stable matching, turns out very often to be very close to optimal, to global optimal.